Can I ask you, first of all, uh, Lord Calloway, <laughs> an issue of principle. Do you think it should be uh, left up to a judge only to decide whether they are going to recuse themselves? Or should that be something that you or the keeper of the role should be able to insist upon if you believe that there's a potential conflict of interest? Um, the, the short answer to, to, to your question is I, is I don't believe that, that, is, that, that there is any problem with the current system. That is that the judge who knows what his connection is with the case or the parties to it should make the initial decision. That decision is made in open court uh, when the parties are present and is subject to review on appeal. In other words, if somebody is dissatisfied with that decision, it will at some point, or if the, if the litigant, certainly if the litigant eventually loses the case, um, it will go before a ju uh, three judges who will uh, review whether that decision was correct or not. And if it was incorrect, then th th clearly the decision in the case would, be, would fall. But, but supposing the person bringing the case to court isn't aware of any conflict of interest that the judge may have, uh, and uh, it doesn't ever find out, but it may well be that the judge has been influenced by a particular interest. Um, surely that's not right. Surely if, if the judge, um, if, if, if there is any potential conflict of interest, surely there should be some kind of declaration or some commitment by the judge that um, there is no, con you know, an explicit statement, there is no conflict of interest. Because uh, if people, are, they might not have the resources to appeal, uh, for example. Um, so is the, is the system not balanced? balanced against those people who come to court for justice? No, it, it, it is not. Um, I, again, I go back to something which I uh, mentioned earlier, uh, and this is uh, it's very important. Scotland does not have a corrupt judiciary. This matter has been examined by independent persons, notably the Greco uh, anti-corruption body um, operating under the auspices of the Council of Europe, who examined the United Kingdom judiciary, including the Scottish judiciary, and they were clear that, uh, that fortunately we, as distinct from many other countries, do not suffer from corruption within the judiciary. Uh, and for that reason, they did not consider that a register of interests was necessary. Because if one's introducing this kind of measure, you have to be satisfied uh, really that it is necessary and that it is, it is proportionate. So if, it's, if one's analysing its proportionality, one has to look at, well, what exactly are we guarding against here? Now, if uh, the situation where that there, were, that there was corruption in the Scottish judiciary, which we would discover at, at some point or another, then, of course, we would have to consider measures to prevent that, one of which may be uh, a register of certain interests. Uh, until such time as it's demonstrated that there is corruption within the Scottish judiciary, I am entirely satisfied that there is no requirement for a register of interests and that it would be positively detrimental um, to the administration of justice, particularly in relation to the recruitment of judges and especially in, at the higher level uh, of the judiciary. Can, can I draw a parallel with the register of interests that members of this parliament have to sign and update on a regular basis? That came about not because of any allegations or belief that the system was corrupt or the MSPs are corrupt. Uh, in the 18 years we've been here, I haven't heard one allegation of corruption. But it's not there because of allegations of corruption. It is there to ensure that there is no prejudice. So that if I'm participating in a debate and I have an interest that I have not declared, um, then I'm open to the allegation, not of corruption, but of prejudice. Uh, by having a register of interest and declaring interest, say, in a debate or in a committee like this, then there is a transparency to ensure that I am not acting in a prejudicial fashion. Now, going back to the case cited, as I come in by Mr MacDonald of Lord Malcolm and the advanced construction in the Donald Nolan case, uh, where Lord Malcolm's son was involved um, as a lawyer with one of the parties. Um, the, the issue there was not an allegation of corruption, it's an allegation of possible prejudice or misconception of prejudice. And that is a very good example of why uh, either a register of interest or a more robust system of recu recusal, or perhaps both, might serve the judiciary very well.
Uh, in relation to Lord Malcolm's case, I am satisfied entirely that Lord Malcolm's actions were entirely honourable and he acted in accordance with the Code of Judicial Ethics. Um, I'm not sure what is... What is, what is I, I'm, aware of, I'm aware of the background to it. No, but have you investigated it? Well, I, I've read the papers invo uh, which, invo well, uh, which it involves. Well, with all due respect, you know, Melanie Collins and Donald Nolan have written to you on numerous occasions and at no time have you replied to them, let alone met them. So you haven't I, heard the other side of the case. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not aware of letters to me by well, the, that particular well, person. Well, your, your office... Sorry. Yes, I absolutely. But, 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 you're, but, you're but suggesting my point is, how, how can you reach that conclusion if you haven't heard the other side? I have, I've, I've read um, documents emanating from the persons that you've uh, mentioned. So far as I'm aware, they were not addressed to me, um, but I could be wrong about that. Um, um, but the position is that I'm aware of uh, the circumstances of the case. I'm satisfied that there was, uh, the Lord Malcolm's conduct was entirely correct in the circumstances. But here, this is part of the problem that... Um, that uh, you've perhaps highlighted. This has got nothing to do with a register of pecuniary interests, that case. Uh, the, the, the suggestion is that we should start registering uh, what our relatives are doing and where they're working and matters of that sort, which is going way beyond, uh, I suspect, even what is expected of um, uh, politicians. We do have to register what close relatives do. Um, can, I, can I deal with the, 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 the difference between MSPs and uh, the judiciary, which I, I think I, I dealt with earlier on uh, in the morning, um, but it's quite a different function. Uh, a politician is by nature uh, someone who is not independent in the sense that uh, the public expect the judiciary to be. That's not a criticism, it's a reality. And judges do not deal as a generality with the type of issues which politicians are dealing with. Politicians have executive power. They are dealing with major economic interests of one sort or another. As a generality, judges are not dealing with that type of thing, but are dealing with uh, issues usually between private individuals, but can be between private individuals and government or others. And so they're, they're not dealing with, the, with the, the type of issues which politicians are dealing with, such as uh, planning inquiries, etc., uh, at a local level or major uh, devel economic development in society as a whole. Uh, the, the need for independence in the judiciary is different from the kind of independence which a politician requires, uh, because with a politician it's primarily, uh, as, as you've pointed out, uh, issues of a pecuniary nature. These, these are not the issues which arise in most of the recusal cases with, with which we are concerned. What we are concerned with as judges is that we appear to be independent of all connection with the case, so that it's not a question of um, having a pecuniary interest. And I think if one looks at the register of recusals, uh, certainly in recent years or in the last year, I don't think any of them were to do with pecuniary interest at all. It was to do with social connections with people whether someone is a friend, whether uh, a party to the litigation is a friend of a friend, and matters of that sort. And these are the type of situations which are raised by people in the practical uh, reality of litigation. And these are the issues which are being dealt with. And unless you're suggesting a, a register of one's friends, and presumably, therefore, one's enemies, uh, then the, the, the real issue with recusal in the judicial system would not be being addressed. Well, again, if I can just finally, yes, draw the, draw the parallel between our register and, and uh, what's been talked about in terms of either recusal or financial interest. Uh, politicians, uh, particularly MSPs, actually, uh, as individuals and collectively, MSPs, unless they're ministers, don't have executive power per se. But it's what's very important is the perception of fairness, the perception that justice has been carried out. And rightly or wrongly, if in any case, without referring to a specific case, if the relative, a close relative of um, a judge is participating in the case, rightly or wrongly, the perception is that there may be a degree of prejudice. Now, it might be very unfair, but the point is to try to ensure that the reputation the excellent reputation of the judiciary down the years in Scotland, that the judiciary retains that reputation, not just for not being corrupt, which we all accept, we're not accusing anybody of corruption, 
but the perception of fairness, the perception of being um, not prejudiced is extremely important. And I would argue that certainly in at least one case recently, uh, which we have referred to briefly, uh, that perception is that there may have been an unfairness and a prejudice uh, in the way the matter was conducted, particularly as the judge concerned was involved in the case not once, but a number of, on a number of occasions. I disagree entirely with your analysis of that particular case, and I repeat what I said earlier. Uh, the, 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 the case that you're referring to uh, um, did not involve the judge's son, as it was, uh, having any active involvement with the case whatsoever. Now, we have uh, very clear rules in our statement of uh, principles of judicial ethics as to how to deal with this matter, and it is made very clear uh, in uh, that uh, statement that uh, if a relative is the advocate in the case before one, then uh, the, the modern approach to that is that the judge should not hear the case, or one could put it another way around, that the relative should not be presenting the case, whichever uh, way it happens to be put. Uh, so that the older, uh, the situation that we had, say, 20 or 30 years ago, when it was commonplace for the relatives of judges of one sort or another to be advocating the case, that practice no longer exists. Uh, it doesn't exist because it was thought that uh, there was any actual problem with the decision making, but, as you say, because of a perception of unfairness. Now, there is a very clear judicial rule about this, uh, and I am not aware of any case in which that rule has been breached. I myself um, have uh, been in a situation where um, my son has been involved with a particular firm uh, who have been litigating before me, and uh, if uh, that is the case, the judge would be expected to declare that, uh, and uh, the parties would then decide whether to take the point or not. Uh, but if they took the point and the relative was uh, just happened to be a member of the same firm uh, operating in a different department, then I would not encourage the judge to, uh, to um, recuse himself in that situation.